Welcome back again, folks. Let's work on our crafting level. So, right now you notice we got this to where we'll be able to level it up. And we'll be able to hide certain things behind level requirements. But let's set up the functionality for that. So, in my player blueprint, over here under functions, I'm going to add a function and call it gain crafting XP compile real quick we want to set an input called crafting XP gained and set it to a float now we're gonna to need to set up some variables current oh, crafting XP duplicate and set next crafting level and both of those can go under our base player stats player base stats oh the drain rate oh, I'll, I'll adjust that later for now we want to drag out get our current crafting experience float plus float add that to it then we want to set our current crafting experience to that then we want to drag off here do a greater than or equal add a branch and we want to find out if it's greater than or equal to our next crafting level if it is we want to add we want to find our player name it's a text variable. We'll duplicate that real quick and call it crafting level. I'm going to default that to. No what happened? Novice. So that in our crafting screen, we can bind, create a binding in our content, drag out our player reference, get crafting level and it'll tell us what we got so if it's greater than or equal to then we want to hmm we'll just float minus float And promote that to a local variable called craft difference then we will set not get we will set our current crafting experience to that difference set our next casting next crafting level rather get our next crafting level do a float times float and I'm just gonna double it that'll work so for our current crafting XP we want it to be zero next crafting level I'm thinking 30 arbitrary you can change it to whatever you like so now Oh, uh, at the end we want to check again just to make sure it's not still. It shouldn't be because we're going to make it fairly difficult for them to level their crafting because you want it to be something. Uh, oh, crap. Okay. Alt, left click because there's one more thing we need to do. We want to get our crafting level not get we want to set our crafting level hmm all right we'll do one more call it crafting level like that we'll make that an integer and move it up to our 
inventory, we'll set it to default to zero so that we can do a switch on int. So I'm going to drag out my crafting level and get it. Drag this over a little bit. Get crafting level. Int plus int. And set our crafting level to that. We'll leave it defaulted to zero. So I'm going to add a few pins. Uh, I'm going to add four. Right click and I can remove the default. So if zero, novice. Should never be zero, but just, you know. So we'll duplicate control C, control V it out a couple times. Hook it up to each one. This way we can change the text based on that value. So novice. Apprentice Artisan and Master. And then reroute node so we can hook all of these directly to that. And just for safety precautions sake I like to hook it back over into itself just so it can continually check afterwards because if it's not greater then it'll just do nothing so it's okay to do that now in our crafting screen in our event graph we want to drag out our player reference get our function of craft gain crafting experience do that I'm gonna just control C box select control V you can hook these all to the same one but I'm gonna make each one kind of give you a little bit different amount of experience so like the more complex something is or the more items it requires or what have you you get more experience so the first one should be health potion. I'm going to make it give three crafting experience. Mana potion also three, maybe four. Cooked meat, ten. Blueberry treat, three also. Armor kits, five. Iron ingots, ten. Just arbitrary numbers, just for testing purposes. So now in our crafting screen, we want to go to our bar. First, I want to change its color. So under appearance, fill color, and opacity, I'm going to change it to like a golden color. I don't know why, but that always makes me think of a level up bar. So under its percent, we'll bind that to our player reference. Get crafting, get current crafting experience, get craft, get next crafting level, float divided by float, and hook that up, and let's test it out. So, what do I have? I have iron. jumped up quick. Alright, so now I got blueberries. Let's drop blueberries. I don't really have anything, but... So, crafting requires raw meat. Boom. Now we're an apprentice level crafter, and our bar has reset. And it should take even more to level up now. So let's just see how long these potions take. So we go back to our crafting menu. And it was just a little bump, so yeah, it looks like it's actually working.
Now as an example of what you can do with that, you can go to this and go to its is enabled down under behavior and you can bind that. Player reference, drag out, get crafting level, and let's just say it's greater than or equal to 1. So that if it's not, oh no, I can't do it. Can't do nothing. So, testing purposes, I'm going to add. I'm going to change my iron ore to 30 so that we can go in. So now we got 30 of those. And when I craft this, craft again, craft again, now we can craft that because we leveled up. So that's how you can do kind of a crafting level system. Um, so that's pretty simple. So yeah, our game's coming across or coming along pretty good. But let's just check a few variables real quick. It changes, it changes. Okay. Good deal. I'm actually gonna set its binding to Oh. Right, let's update our let's do one thing real quick. For our crafting system, I'm going to add one more variable of a boolean and call it near fire question mark because really you can't cook meat without being near fire. So in our crafting screen, I'm going to set that raw meat or that cooked meats enabled to get near fire. So what we can do now is in our, hmm, wherever you want to put props, I'm going to just do it in here. I'm going to right click, create a blueprint class of an actor, and call it fire pit, no, pit underscore BP. Right click, I'm going to add a static mesh. We don't have the static mesh at the moment, but we'll be able to just go plug it in later on. I'm gonna add a sphere collision of about 100. Compile that, go to the event graph. And a begin play, cast to player, blueprint, get character. Promote that to a variable of player ref. Click our sphere. On component begin overlap, which is the second one. You can scroll this out if you need to to see, but it's usually the second one. I'm going to get the other actor that we're overlapping and find out if it's equal to our player. Get our player reference. Find out if it's equal to our interact radius. Branch. You can just do the player itself, but I've noticed it has some kind of funky issues with that sometimes. But I don't have that issue when I use the radius, so I'm just going to set it up that way. And if true, then we want to cast to our player ref and set near fire. Set that to true. And now we can drag this way back. Box select all of it, control C. Click our sphere again, and on component end overlap, which is the one right below that, control V. Other actor plugged into this, plug that in, and then we will set not near fire. So for now, I'm going to make it so that we know where it's at until we set up that static mesh. I'm going to say, don't hide the sphere collision in game. So I'm going to drag it out. If you need to, you can also set a print string to tell you that you're in range of it, but I'm just going to go. I am not in range. And now 
now I am in range. So now you can set up a fireplace so that when you're out on here, you can harvest the berries from the plants when we get that set up. But, can't do nothing. Still got my raw meat. I get near that fire. Open the menu, craft it up. There you go. So, pretty fun stuff, yeah. It's coming along pretty good. It actually feels like a game now, but. So, thanks for stopping by again.